Yeah, look, I think there's a lot in that small to mid-cap space. I mean, I can probably give you a dozen examples of companies that we think the market's mispricing. Now, maybe a good example is Reckon. Um, again, the, the MYOB, the, the much larger big brother there, is uh, you know trading on 20 plus times earnings and um, you know has been getting an enormous amount of press. And yet, Reckon, uh, which we think has got excellent management, uh, is doing everything right, has a we think has got a better growth profile, uh, is, is trading on sort of 12 to 13 times. Um, you know, with a with a high free cash flow and probably a record amount of opportunities in front of it. Look, I think part of it is, is just due to its size and liquidity and free float, which you know doesn't impact us. We're we're quite happy with playing that in the town. And I think the other reason is that um, there's been you know the, the float itself is is obviously an opportunity to f to focus attention to a particular company. We often see that, and often companies outside of that um, uh, you know a push to the side. I think in the fullness of time, people see the opportunities that are ahead of reckon. And I think we'll see a re-rating there. Yeah, look, certainly, I think I mean in the energy sector, I think Woodside's a great example. I think Woodside's trading above where it should be. Uh, it's a great business, and long term, you know, it's worth a lot more than the current share price suggests. But it's heavily owned by the retail uh, public, and we think that um, you know they have not um, pushed through their models uh, any level of oil price resembling what they're going to achieve over the last half. Um, and of course impacting their dividends. So I think possibly Woodside's one that may surprise on the downside.